Hi, my name is Tom Maloya, and we're talking today about multi-institution analysis of infection control practices identifies the subset associated with best surgical site infection performance. You'll have to excuse me while I take off all of the required infection control gear at our institution to describe this study. Let me put on my Nisquip cloth hat here. Oh, much more comfortable. All right, so let's talk about this study, which will be published in the Journal of the American College of Surgeons very soon. This study was conducted by the Texas Alliance for Surgical Quality, which is an ACS Nisquip collaborative that involves a number of hospitals within Texas. So what did we measure? The idea of this study was to determine which of our commonly utilized infection control practices, many of which are mandated without evidence, impact surgical site infections. And we used NISQIP risk-adjusted data to validate this. The areas that we focused on were OR attire, preoperative processes, such as did the patient take a shower with HibaCleanse before the operation, intraoperative processes, mainly around the skip metrics, such as antibiotic dosing, postoperative processes, and reporting of outcomes. And this was an important section. We asked each group how often they report the SSI outcomes to their providers. This was a copy of the survey that we uh, gave to each group. It had 36 total components. Here's an example of the detailed questions regarding OR attire. Next, we looked at the SSI performance of 20 of the hospitals in the task collaborative. And what you see here is a graph demonstrating that we had a group of high outliers and a group of low outliers. So what did we find when we compared the infection control practices with the SSI performance? The first thing we found is that OR attire did not matter at all to the outcome of the patients in these hospitals. What did matter were some preoperative processes, including did the patient have a preoperative shower with CHG or soap, and did the program use a CHG wipe to the wound before the operation. Regarding intraoperative processes, almost every hospital was skip metric compliant with their antibiotics, but additional factors were the use of a combined uh, HibaCleanse or Betadine with alcohol skin prep and clean closure, meaning that the surgeons change gown, gloves, and instruments to close the wound. Prophylactic antibiotics were important. In terms of postoperative processes, those programs where people wore gloves when they examined patients had better SSI performance. And lastly, reporting of outcomes either at the institution, department, or surgeon level significantly impacted the SSI performance at the hospitals that use those reporting. So what we see if we envision the operating room as three boxes. One is things that occur at the wound or surgical site, the larger area of the sterile field, and the even larger era, area of the operating suite. The only factors that impacted SSI performance were those that impacted the wound or surgical site. And other things such as OR attire that occupy the sterile field or the operating suite did not factor into wound performance. Lastly, reporting, which obviously affects personnel in all three areas of the operating room, strongly was associated with better in, uh, wound infection performance. We would like to thank the entire team, which included many of the surgeon champions of the task hospitals, as well as our surgical clinical reviewers for their support of this 